like to thank the chair for the introduction and thank all the organizers for having me here. And it is a great honor and a pleasure for me to talk at this conference in honor of Professor Eluzi. Let me say a few like personal words. Uh, the first time that I met Professor Eluzi was when he was teaching a course, an uh, algebra geometry course at Tsinghua University. And I attend the course as a student from undergrad student at Peking University. And the that it was in 2009, tw almost 12 years ago. And it is, I feel it's kind of like one of the most uh, the keyest thing happened to my life, my mathematics career, that I managed to learn the modern algebra geometry from the master of the subjects. And it definitely opens the door of like arithmetic geometry to me. Uh, even though I did not do my PhD in France, but during the time that I think there was some email correspondence between me and Luke, and he was so nice and generous to answer all naive or maybe all kinds of questions, uh, mathematics questions or some life-related questions for me, and also um, introduced me to some nice restaurants in the Paris area. I really appreciate all the encouragement and the kindness of Professor Yuluzi, and uh, it's very hard to express all my gratitude towards him. And today I would like to talk about um, the joint work with Wanning Li, Elena Mantova, and Rachel Priest about basic reductions of Arbenian varieties over totally real fields. So I would like to start my talk which actually is like one of the motivation for the project is the theorem of Elkis. Which says that if we have an elliptic curve, let me stick with the case when it's defined over the field of rational numbers. And then he proved that there are infinitely many super singular reductions and let me just make a remark is that it's I think, and now would say classical, back to the maybe 80s that we know based on probably the work of Sear and the uh, Mm. that if we have an elliptic curve over a number field and then the set of ordinary reduction primes is of density one, maybe after possibly a finite extension of Q. OK, so what Elke's theorem said is like we have a set of density 0, and he managed to prove this set is, has cardinality to be infinite. And then like to motivate the case that we would like to study, I would like to point out a key input in his proof. Is that so? We use the modal space of generalized elliptic curve, which is the complexified J line. And this one is actually, okay, this is a cross modal space, but I'll just say it's isomorphic to P1 over Q. Here we have P1, which is genus 0. And Q is a totally real field, so it explains something about the title. OK, so actually I would say uh, we are grateful to Liang Xiao, who read some of our previous work, and the point out to us is like there are some more right space of uh, binning varieties, which also happens to have this property. And actually, we would like to generalize Elkis theorem in this direction. But so before we move on, let me just support the question here. So how about abelian varieties 
parameterized by some Schmerl curves. And I would like to first make a remark. Is the ordinary reversal super singular thing? Let me just uh, stick with the PL type Schmerl curve. Although, like everything heuristic that I said will still hold for Hodge type or abelian type Schmerl curves. But let me stick with the PL type Schmerl curves. And uh, it is the work of Vianman and uh, Whitehorn who treat so-called Newton stratification, Newton polygon stratification for Schumer curves of BL type and their uh, works generalize their results to Hodge type Schumer varieties. And so we know that, okay, Schumer curve as a generalization of the J line, it has like at modulo a good prime, namely a prime that the Schumer curve has good reduction, which I will specify later for almost all primes, that we have two Newton strata. In this case, you could think about just uh, like using the Newton polygon of the abelian variety, the H1 of the abelian variety. So you have two Newton strata. One is called the mu ordinary, which corresponding to the ordinary one for the J line. And the other is called basic, which corresponding to the super singular case for the J line. So we have two Newton strata. This is the open dense one, so which is one dimensional. And this is the finite one, the finite close. And this is the zero dimensional strata. OK, so we can replace our question by saying that when we have an abelian variety parameterized as Schumer curve, can we have infinitely many basic reductions? OK, but before that, I would like to continue this remark saying that the, we know, OK, I'll put some name here, but it may not show up in. It's basically essentially using the idea goes back to Sierra. Also, the idea of cats in the written down in a paper of August. You may also see the work of Pink or recent work of Fete. So basically, it's a kind of like a standard result you could prove is like so after a possible uh, finite. Extension, let me denote this by a binary variety over k is a number field. So, finite extension of k, we have density one set of uh, primes with ordinary reduction. Uh, here, I just uh, say ordinary when I pass myself to a finite extension, then in the most uh, split primes that the mu ordinary Newton polygon is actually the ordinary ones. So which means that the question, so thus if we look at the set of basic reduction primes, for A over K is of density zero. And our hope is to prove the cardinality of this set is equals to infinite. So, so what is basic reduction prime? Ah, so basic means that, so when I parameterize, so I have a binary variety over k parameterized by a certain Schumer curve, and then by the theory of Newton's strata for Schumer curve, you have two stratas, and one is mu ordinary, one is basic, and basic reduction means that when you mod that prime, you hit the basic locus. Yeah, thank you. Concerning this uh, uh, density zero, mm -hmm. 
So I guess, uh, is it only after, let us say for you, elliptic curves, when you look at the single complex multiplication, you can have uh, half of them are, are uh, ordinary yeah. enough. Yes. So, so when you say density zero, you mean after an extension or you mean something else? Okay, so good question. Uh, if I just assign their results directly, I'll mean something else, I mean after extension, so which means is like there are some cases one could prove this part easily by a Charcot-Tarff density because without pass to a field extension, the basic reduction may corresponding to a positive density locus, which is exactly happens case when we talk about abelian varieties parameterized by Shimura curves. It's exactly happens when it has CM. Then yes, we have. Mm, it may or may not be half half depends on what like CM type it is, but it will be a positive density over the base field K. But I would like to mention the work of well, Samin who treats certain kind of um, these type of results. So well, Samin has a paper about abelian surface, and he actually gives you an answer on what is the exact finite extension we need to take. And I expect it's like you're using similar ideas, which he used like the cytotate type of groups, one should be able to prove is like, if I do not have extra endomorphisms other than the PL structure given the Shimura curve, then we should not need to pass to a field extension of K, and hence like this density, is, this density zero will be over K. Okay, so and who did you mention? So, uh, so let me just uh, say, uh, you may look at the work of Will Samin, but he did not treat exactly the case that we want here. But I expect the similar ideas will hold. Okay, so that's a great question. It says like, and these I expect there are specific cases like we won't be able to use a Charcot density theorem to prove. Yes, sir, th this type of result. Okay, now go back to the key input of Elke's proof. We need a genus zero Schumer curve defined over some totally real field. And then here's the candidates. That we're grateful to Liang Xiao for point out these to us like in some of our previous work. Okay, so we want a Schumer curve of genus zero and has some model. Let me emphasize the word has some model over some totally real field. So actually we could think about certain Schumer curves arising from so-called cyclic cover, mu m covers of P1 ramified. at four points. Here I send ramified at four points because I want a one-dimensional family. So when I have four points on P1, then up to equivalence, it means it's a one-dimensional thing. Okay, and uh, actually in the work of Moonen, he gave many examples. So we start from the modular space of curve, which ramified uh, at four points, it may or may not be Schumer curves, and Moonen gives you many examples when a Schumer curve actually coming from these cases. So why, why did you say four points? That? So four points gives you like this moderate space has dimension equals to four minus three equals to one. When I have four points on P1, oh, okay, up to okay, okay. Okay, so let me just uh, stick with one example instead of talking about all the families in Muna's table. So key example for today. And I think our strategy will like generalize to all his families and some other ones. So we would like to think about uh, uh, m equals to five, and we think about mu five covers with so-called inertia type 1, 1, 1, 2. I'm going to explain what inertia type. So let me just allow myself to pass to Q 
adjoint zeta five, where zeta five is a fifth root of unit, so that I can actually write down the equation easily. So I would have y to the fifth equals to x, x minus one, x minus t. So this is the parameter t, which gives the one-dimensional family. And this one, one, one corresponding should here one, one, one. And two is the index at infinity. OK, so we can study these type of curves. And it happens that if we take the Torelli map, If we take the Torelli map, we'll have an abelian uh, family of abelian varieties of dimension four. And actually, this is one connected component of the following PL Shimura variety. So, which parameterize, so principally, all lives uh, are being the full food such that we have an endomorphism. So we have Z adjoint mu five contained in the endomorphism of A and plus a Kotowitz condition, which coming from the inertia type, ramification type. So the Kotowitz condition is that there exists an embedding of Q zeta 5 into so here I write the kind of the modular problem over field, but you could also make it over anything away from five. Oh, actually, you could make it to be over spec Z, but let me for simplicity write it for field. So there exists an embedding of this one into K for the such that. Now I have Q zeta 5 x on the Lie algebra of A over K with Keras's polynomial of zeta 5 looks like uh, T minus zeta 5, T minus zeta 5 squared, and uh, T minus zeta 5 to the fifth. So Okay, so in other words, it's like, well, I have, this is the Kotwitz condition, but let me reformulate it as a unitary Shimura variety. So a unitary Shimura variety corresponding to an emission space emission space V over Q adjoint root phi. So this is the total the real subfield of Q adjoint zeta 5 of dimension 2. So this space coming from, so this emission space coming from the uh, H1 Betti cohomology of the abelian variety and the one we, with the symplectic pairing coming from the polarization, but the symplectic pairing is compatible with the endomorphism and thus it makes it into a anti, sorry, screw some, emission form, and then we divide it by some up to some choice. You can have an emission space of dimension two, and the, this Caldwell's condition here gives us that such that the signature. So we have two embeddings of Q root five into Q bar. So. For the embedding root five maps to root five, we have signature one, one, corresponding to this one and this one. 
And when I have root 5 maps to negative root 5, I have signature to 0. OK, so let me just summarize. It's like this is a particular example where we could think about it as a one dimensional family of curves, which is indeed one connected component of the following PL Schmar curve, which is corresponding to the unitary Schmar variety with a uh, emission space over Q root 5 of dimension 2, whose signature is 1, 1 at one place and the 2, 0 at the other place. <sighs> okay, so this is an example. So let's go back to candidates. So this is an example of a Schmar curve um, with the moduli space to be genus 0. And then if you think about this connected component, the whole Moduli description here can make sense. You have a model actually. So first you have a Q model and you could like make an integral model defined over Z. So this is a situation that we could try to generalize LKC. So now let me just state the expected theorem. Recall what I just said is. So I expect the theorem is a theorem. It's a theorem. Yes, it's a theorem. Uh, just I put expected because the preprint is not on ICAV yet. Yeah, it's a theorem. So I have a abelian variety who coming from the Jacobian of this type of particular curve. So where I say C over Q zeta 5 looks like y to the fifth equals to x, x minus 1, x minus t. And uh, so the title total, the real field correspond to exactly this type of total real field coming from the endomorphism. And then we have some technical assumption which, okay, we hope to remove at some point. So we have two technical assumptions. One is that when we reduce, so, so I have my curve C, and then I have my ideal root 5. I take the residual field, pass to the algebra closure. We assume this one is actually degenerates, namely that this is a genus 4 curve, and it degenerates into uh, two genus 2 curves with Z mu 5 action. Maybe what is uh, C or F? So I have the ideal root 5. And then I take the residue field, I take the algebra closure. Yes. So the, this is the first technical condition about its assumption at 5. And the second technical assumption is about its image in the reals. OK. So now let me draw that. So I have the real points of P1, P1 is our moduli space. And we have three distinct points. So using this moduli problem, the T parameter is like the lambda parameter for the Dijenda family. It's not exactly the J invariant. So we actually forget about all the level structure. We have three points with extra automorphisms. One is P is the degeneration one. which means it looks like this one uh, over R. And it, this is actually a point defined over Q. All these points are defined over Q. And this corresponding to T equals to 0, 1, infinity. And then we have another point we call R. So it's the similar as the J line situation, as we have a point corresponding to T equals to negative 1 or a half 
or two. This is a point with uh, extra. Here, extra means that we have a mu5 action. In addition to the mu5 action, we have an extra plus minus one action. And then we have a third point, q. We have the extra, um, I will say, mu3 action corresponding to the point t equals to plus minus six roots of unit. OK, so we have these three points. And you can check it's like, um, when I take the j invariant of the t, then these things are defined, the, at least the, the moduli. So when I say defined over q, it means we work with the quartz moduli space. And when we talk about the definition of moduli, definition field of moduli. These points are all defined over q. And this actually splits the R line into three segments. And the currently, our condition saying that, so our curve C has two embeddings. So C is defined over this real quadratic field. So it has two real embeddings. The two real embeddings, both of them lies on this segment here. OK, so these are the technical assumptions. And then we say that A has infinitely T is th there. No, T is an element in the. <laughs> okay, this is the. And also, this T. T is mm -hmm. in which field? Uh, T is not in this field. So, what is in this field is that, OK, t in this field is OK. But what exactly in this field is like? So the way that you relate the j line with the lambda, the gender lambda, and then you plug in t into that formula. And then as far as that one is over q root 5, that's fine. OK, so the j of t is in So five. yes, so. Sorry? Mm -hmm. So what? Sorry. You wrote that C is defined over Q. I was confused. C is wrote is defined over Q. Oh, I, I hear means once you pass, because like I won't be able to necessarily write a curve. Sorry, thank you. Won't necessarily be able to write the curve C in this particular form if I do not pass through this field. But you also need the T. <laughs> The T lies in this field also, or not? Uh, so it's like, so let me just uh, restate this part. It's like, so I have a abelian variety coming from a Jacobian of a curve C. This curve C, when you pass to, let me want to say, where C over Q bar will look like this particular form. And uh, then the condition of this one defined over Q root 5 means JT lies in Q root 5. This is, you can do it as t squared minus t plus 1 uh, over t squared, t squared, sorry, t minus 1 squared. Has infinitely many basic reductions. And I wrote q zeta phi because like, in general, if you don't pass to q zeta phi, you may not necessarily be able to write your curve with these properties into this particular form. So then, the mu five action is defined originally on the curve, or, or uh, no, no. So the mu five action is not necessarily defined originally on the curve.
So that's a version of the theorem. And then let me make a remark is like, what do could we do probably in a finite amount of time? <laughs> and then the first thing is like, uh, modulo some very minor technical difficulties, that difficult, sorry, issues that we haven't checked, but we think we'll be able to do it. So we expect the proof that I'm going to present today will be able to just uh, replace condition one by A has a super special reduction at root 5. So by super special reduction is like, in this case, our Schumacher curve has two Ekdahl outstratus. at root 5. And uh, then the super special corresponding to just uh, the zero dimensional uh, locus. And uh, in other words, it's the same as saying that when I take the p torsion of the abelian variety, it is isomorphic to the product of the p torsion of super singular elliptic curves. And uh, this is, and the particular case there is, a, so here, like when you pass to like product of super single elliptic curve, it may or may not respect the polarization, but here is a decomposition which respect the polarization. Uh, okay, and then second is that we'll be able to show, I think, so this is the P, QR picture, we'll be able to show that if our two embeddings of C, not necessarily nice in this segment, nice in these two segments, it doesn't matter where in these two segments they nice in, this is also okay. So, I'll replace. Oh, sorry, two. Each one lies in another sector. Uh, so I view these two segments as one thing, and the both of them can lie uh, anywhere here. But not on the points PQ and R. Uh, PQR is also fine because PQR will be have super singular abelian, sorry, CM abelian varieties, and then you can just uh, conclude by Shimura Tanyama. No, P is the generation, so it's not. So, uh, yeah, but it's the product of two CM abelian varieties. Sorry, in this particular case, if I take the Jacobian, uh, it will be isomorphic to the product of two abelian surfaces CM by Q zeta 5. For, for what? For P? For P. And the R is isogeny to P. And the Q is the CM abelian fourfold, which is CM by Q adjoined to zeta 5 and zeta 3. But uh, when you write, the, when you have this curve, x exponent one, x minus t, when t is zero, one, or infinity, it's uh, it's not the same general. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. So in that case, you see, if you look at this particular family, it actually has uh, it degenerates, and it degenerates into two genus, two curves intersect at one point. And then when you take the Jacobian, it's the product. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Then you can do it. Yeah. Okay. And uh, then to completely remove these two conditions, we need to do a little bit more work than the proof that I present today. And I would like to mention previous work is like in Elkis. He has later some generalizations in 89 is that, so for elliptic curve over a number field uh, such that there exists an embedding of K into the rules. And then also there's the work of Baba and the Granos in 2008. They work with, uh, OK, 
okay, they formulated as, uh, let me just say they, they work with Schmerer curve associated to the quaternion algebra B over Q, so quaternion algebra, ramified at 2 and 3. Uh, they also have uh, like this type of condition in their theorem. So let me write down another remark that I was marveling around is that uh, the method, let's say our method, generalizes to all curves in Munen's work, which means those ones coming from, Schumacher curves coming from cyclic covers are curves. Okay. Um, cyclic covers ramified four points, and what we expect is like we expect to generalize to uh, just the genus zero Schumacher curve with three points. Oh, sorry, genus zero Schumacher curve over. Okay, let me just say with one a model over totally real field. And uh, the second is like it has three points with extra automorphisms defined, but with these three points defined over some totally real fields. So this is what we expect that in general the whole method will work. And here A model doesn't necessarily need to be the canonical model of Schumacher curve, especially for this particular Schumacher curve that we are talking about. The canonical model is defined over like Q zeta 5, but it's actually, if you do compute it following the conjecture of long lines and uh, which worked out by Milner and Shing on like what is the Gawa conjugates of Schumacher curves over like the Gawa field of the Gawa group of the reflex field over Q, and you will see this particular one. You can actually descend it over Q, and uh, so A model over some total real field. Kay. Any further questions about the statement of the results? Kay. So for so I have twenty minutes. I would like to talk about. I'll first just give a very brief sketch of Elke's proof, and I'll talk about uh, how we modify each step to actually prove our result. So here we first get a sketch of Elke's. Okay. So first the reduction step, it is enough to show that so given a finite set S of primes, we can construct, find a P, so such that E mod P super singular and the P not in S. Then we could just uh, do through by contradiction or induction that you can produce more and more primes. So as far as we could give a finite set and we can always produce a super singular prime away from that finite set, so we can always produce new ones. Okay. And then how to produce super singular reductions and related to previous question about like uh, the density is like when we have CM if the curves of CM abelian varieties, we know exactly by Shimura Tanyama which the reduction are. So we use CM points to help us construct super single reductions. So okay. use CM points. 
and let me be a little bit more specific here. So we pick up prime d, which is congruence to negative 1 mod 4. And we consider the Higgins cycle or the CM points CM by the ring of integers of Q adjoint root negative d. And then I can construct a polynomial. So I get a polynomial PD over Q uh, whose roots are J invariant of all these CM points. And what we want is like, so we want, so our PD, and then we evaluate at the point E, and we want this one has a prime factor. Okay, it has a prime factor means that E mod that prime factor, let me look at my notation, P, if it has a prime factor, means E module that prime factor is isomorphic to one of these CM points. So that's the definition. And uh, so we want a prime factor, but we want a super single reduction. So we want a prime factor P, which is inert or ramified in Q root negative D over Q. This is where this CM point has super single reduction. We P D of J of E. You want P D of J of E? Uh, yeah, so sorry. Yes, here, like when I put the bracket, it means like, yeah. Um, uh, if I just put bracket, it means I look at this one on the moderate space. Okay. And in order to do this, so the quadratic reciprocity comes in. Is like, so this condition about P inert or ramified here means that minus D mod P is not a square. And then we want to relate it to a condition about modulo D. So by quadratic reciprocity, if we consider P modulo D and the, take the product of these two in the general symbol, it equals to one. So which means Okay, so here is like, I have this condition means that I have a negative one here. So by rest, quadratic reciprocity, I just need a negative one here. So in other words, we can study PD, uh, JE, mod D. And we want a prime p not equals to square mod d. So previously we want negative d to be not a square mod p. Now it reduced to that we want a p which is not a square mod d, or or p equals to zero. And recall is p is a prime factor of this one. So if we know this one is not a square mod d, sorry, if the absolute value of this one is not a square mod d, then we're done. But that is something we don't know how to prove, but we can do a little bit more. Is So the second part is local properties of PD. So first so we'll have looping tape theory. The maintain theory tells us about kind of like when I have a point in mod P, how do I lift, do CM lifting of a point mod P? So we use Nubin Tate theory and study the CM liftings, and we see that the polynomial PD 
is almost like a square. So times 7x minus 1728 is congruent to a polynomial square mod d. So it means that I always have, away from 1728, I always from uh, two, two liftings at each point mod p, which in this particular case, you can apply Julian lifting theorem. I'm going to talk a little more later, but let me just say the Vinci theorem will give you this one. And then we have an Archimedean situation. It's like, now we'll just replace this one by that one. That's completely fine. And then what is absolute value? So we have the real roots. So PDX has a unique real root, which actually goes to negative infinity as D goes to infinity. So this means that, so if x is smaller, sorry, if je is smaller than 1728, then we have, this is negative as d goes to infinity. Because it has, now this one has two real roots. One is 1728, the other one goes to negative infinity. So, if I have something nice in between, then this one is negative. So this also explains why in the main theorem there's a statement of, about geodesic. Okay, so this would imply is absolute value of uh, j e minus 1728 times p d j e equals to minus one times which is uh, congruent to minus one times the square mod d, but which is not a square mod, uh, okay, not a square mod d, because negative one is not a square. Okay, so, um, that's essentially the proof of Elkis. It's like you can produce one, and to avoid the set S, you just construct a CM cycle which is ordinary, has ordinary reduction as the set S. Then the new super singular reductions that we produce definitely will not lie on the S. So, uh, so you have something which is J minus times this is, yeah. is, is not a square. Yes. But then you take a prime dividing this. Yes. But why it is a prime dividing PD and not prime dividing JE? Oh, not this, because, oh, one thing that I said, this is, I said this one more, this one is a square, so which means 1728 is actually a root of it. So, so, so more details is this is an odd degree polynomial, so it's never going to be a square. And odd degree coming from when you reduce to something which is 1728, the CM lifting doesn't show up in pairs. So in order to compensate that, we put a factor here. So this one, mod D, already has a factor like this. So if it's mod D equals to that, that's... Fine. You said the choice of p is a p prime dividing. Dividing this, yes. which is the same as dividing this. Uh, the same as this. the factor j minus. Okay. Maybe I said that. Yeah. Oh, another word is kind of, if you have, let me put this way, if you hit 1728, it also has super single reduction, that's fine. So dividing this one doesn't cause any problem. All the factors dividing this one also give super single reduction. Yes, okay. Now, so for our proof, it's like we have 
from the sketch here, we have a couple of things to do. Is like we construct our CM points, we'll study the local properties. So the idea of construction CM point is we want a CM point once we apply Shimura Tanyama, we have basic reduction at some property which has something to do about the ramification of a quadratic, well, uh, inert or split in a quadratic extension. So let me just directly give the construction is we pick to replace D. We use lambda inside the ring of the integers of q i joint root 5, and then lambda totally positive. This is a prime. Okay, and then what we do is we consider a CM type coming from, so q zeta 5 at root negative lambda, and with the CM type coming from there's uh, so we already have like its behavior. We have the Cotwood's condition, so it get, tells you give some restrictions of the CM type and the CM type particularly. Uh, okay, let me just say there's a up to unique up to equivalence of CM types. There's a unique CM type which is compatible with the Cotwood's condition there. And uh, using Shimura Tanyama, we'll see that it has basic reduction at P if P is inert or ramified in Q root 5 adjoint negative lambda over Q root 5. And then let me just mention is like in there's there is a quadratic reciprocity for Q root five. So it's talking about P in this extension can be reduced, so we reduce the problem. So reduce to study, let me use P lambda and evaluate at our point A, mod lambda. Okay, now for the second part is local properties. And for the local properties, we have a couple of questions. Is the first is, uh, Nubitate still holds about CM liftings uh, with 70-28 replaced by P or R. So far we cannot decide which one it is, but it's like one of them. They corresponding to that you have a trace zero automorphism. So that's 1728, you have a trace zero automorphism. And these two points have trace zero automorphism in PDVSO groups. Okay, so the second part is about that. Uh, so this gives us the finiteness, sorry, condition reduce mod D, and we also have a real kind of type of condition, is we have the odd degree. So the, uh, for P lambda and uh, a unique real root coming from the following is like uh, the unique real root imply it has a 
odd degree because this is a polynomial defined over P lambda is a polynomial defined over Q root 5, defined over a real field. And then, so upper bound upper bound coming from, so I, we have some conditions for lambda. So for the quadratic reciprocity to work, we need lambda to be congruent to negative 1 mod 4. And for this part to work, we have an extra condition is, so we want the norm from q root 5 over q of lambda, which we already assume to be a prime, to be congruent equals to 4 mod 5. And because how many real roots do we have? By CM theory, we first count the ideals, which give you a real point, and we count the number of polarizations. So we use like some class field theory. So we use some, some class, I would say class number um, results. Some results on class numbers. And it gives upper bound is like we have unique ideal gives real point and the plus unique principle polarization. So although we don't know exactly whether it lies on the connected component coming from the Jacobian of curves, but we at least know that it so that's why it's an upper bound. It has a unique principle polarization. So we have at most a unique root, and the existence existence coming from actually let me get some. So we want to produce a real root. And uh, what is the circle that I keep drawing about the real line is we use the apart plane, the uniformization of Schumacher curve is when we have, so we use the theory of triangle groups. And actually the group we work with is a triangle group 2, 3, and a 10. So a subgroup of uh, PSL2R with like automorphism degree 2, degree 3, and degree 10. So like I have, this is like P1R with PQR. And this is our half plane. This is the uniformization. The theory of triangle groups will give us, a, let me call it tau P, tau Q, and uh, tau R. And these are geodesics. Okay, so we actually have a very nice description of the real points on the up half plane, and these coordinates are explicit. And the one way to describe points on the up half plane is using its trace zero stabilizer. So if I give a point, then up to a constant, there's only one element inside positive determinant GL2R element, which fix the element. So we use the correspondence between trace zero element and the points, and then all the points on this is described. So the trace zero stabilizer is given by linear combinations. So I have x of gamma q plus y of gamma p. Sorry, gamma r, if I'm working with this thing here. And then what is CM point? CM point means that I have a trace zero endomorphism minus lambda. So which means the trace zero stabilizer, when I take the determinant, equals to lambda. So this is actually a binary quadratic form over q root 5. Okay, so how to construct uh, points is we using the theory of triangle groups, we get a binary quadratic form, and we use the theory, representability theory of binary quadratic forms over q root 5, then we'll be able to construct our same points. And uh, not just that, so 
sorry, I think I'm running out of time. It's like, it's not just to construct the point, but since this is a quadratic form, and we actually could apply hex theory of equal distribution to actually nicely control where do you want your point to be. And hence, it's also recover the property of the real roots goes to negative infinity for Alki's work. And last remark about avoiding the set S could still work out by assuming that it has mu order reduction at all the other primes, but we won't be able to do it at five because at five is not a good prime. But we use Ekdal Ostrata, so we ask it to lie in the so our same point will lie in the generic Ekdal Ostrata the one we construct, and thus if we are original point nice in the special actor ostrata, we're never going to hit it by our construction. So we avoid the issue of hitting root five. And that's why we can produce more and more primes in the end. Sorry for running out of time, and that's it. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much. So are there questions from here? I didn't quite what it, so to avoid the let us say in Elke's proof to avoid the finite set of primes. So, so he avoid the finite set prime by making sure that the CM point we cons he constructed has ordinary reduction at that given finite set of primes, which you can always do. Ah, uh, even when you take the D set. Yes, 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 yes. And then in our case, it's like we take our lambda, and then for everything away from five, for you to have. Uh, mu ordinary reduction, the condition is like, uh, has nothing to do with the condition of lambda that we put here. So that's why you will have, they are compatible, you'll be able to like apply Trevitorov density saying that you will have like a like positive density set of primes satisfy these conditions, making sure they, they have mu ordinary reduction at uh, any given finite set. But away from root five, because root five, the, the strata is slightly different. We need to work with the act there odd strata instead of the Newton strata. Are there other questions? Uh, and from the, the web? From the web? No, no question. So let's thank speaker again. Thank you very much. <laughs>